What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu slash unity. In this video, you are going to learn how to use colliders to block raycasts. And we're going to do that by adding a glass on top of our current map that we have, our maze that we have. So let's get started. But before we do, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And now let's get to the video. We are going to add a little glass frame in front of our screen and therefore we can just go ahead and create a new 3d object here and in this case we are going to select the plane a plane is basically just a flat surface and we can rename this to something like glass frame for example like so now let's change the position of the glass frame because if we go over to our scene and we go to our glass frame, you can see it's actually quite big. If we look at our glass frame, it's also positioned somewhere entirely weird. So let's reset it to zero, zero. And now you see the glass frame is here and it's even cutting through our ground if we change the perspective. Okay, so I'm going to look at it from the front, so to speak, once again. And I would like to rotate it a little bit so that it's positioned as the front glass, so to speak. So that's something that I would like you to pause the video for and try for yourself. So adjust this glass frame by changing the position, rotation and scale accordingly so that it fills this space here. Not the entire one, the bottom part should be staying open, but just go ahead and try this. Quick pause. The video that you're currently watching is just a fraction of the entire course that I have to offer. So I built this complete Unity Masterclass course in which you are going to learn how to build real games and how to build them from scratch. So you're going to learn how to build a platformer game, how to build a Space Invaders clone, how to build a Fruit Ninjas clone and optimize it for mobile and export it for mobile as well, how to build a first person shooter game and finally how to build a tycoon game similar to Adventurists, which is an endless game. So if you want to become a real game developer, definitely check out the course. You can find the link in the description and you will get the course with a huge discount. So don't hesitate as you will not only get the course, but you will also get it in a structured manner with all of the code as well as a Q&A section with a five star support. So get the course now. I hope to see you there. Okay, so I hope you tried it. So I'm going to just add the values here. So it's at 7.5 for the Y coordinate. So it starts in the center, so to speak. Then I'm going to add a rotation of minus 90 for my X coordinate. So now you will see that it's now cutting through our item just like so, you can see. So now I want it to be in front. So if we look at the X coordinate, you can see it's in the center so I would like it to be in the front so I need to move it a little bit and therefore I'm going to change the Z coordinate like so okay so you see changing the Z coordinate so it's just a little bit in front of it something like minus 0 0.51 should be good so 5 would be exactly on the edge and 51 will be just one hundredth in front of our other items okay so let me actually go up a little bit like so now we of course need to change the scale and i'm going to scale it up to 1.3 for the x scale you see now it's basically this the whole width and then for the z scale i'm going to use 1.4 so now you see it's taking basically the entire front and let me actually move it up a little bit like so then we can change the scale up a little bit again for the z coordinate maybe 1.3 should be better something like this like so and position it at around nine i think this should be good okay so this is really just playing around with the values to see what works of course you could have used the react tool also to change the size like so so just dragging stuff around like so you see this should be fine as well then you have the exact values but i think 
having these values that I, as I defined them here will be fine as well. Okay, now I would like to add a color to it. So let's go over to our materials folder and let's go ahead and create a new material in here like so. And I'm going to call this one glass. Okay, so this will be my glass. Then the rendering mode here on the right hand side. So once you select the glass, on the right side, you can select opaque, which is the default, or transparent, which will make it a little bit transparent. So now, of course, once we select transparent, we can select a color as well, like so. And here, I'm going to select something like 165, 217, and 255 should be fine. And then I'm going to change the A of the RGBA here. The A is the transparency value that we can now change to be rather transparent. So here, if I select something like 80, for example, it should be rather transparent. So now let's drag this onto our plane and onto our glass frame here, like so. And you can see now you have this effect of having this little glass element on top here. So maybe we actually want to make sure that our glass item is really just going all the way to this edge. So it really depends on which edges you're using. So I would recommend to adjust this according to your obstacles that you created. In my case, this should be fine like so. So now let's look at it and we can see now we have this little glass in front of it and it really looks like there is a glass in the way. Now we could of course play around with the opacity here by changing the A value. So if we reduce it, you can see we can make it look more transparent and less transparent depending on the value that we're using here. So something like 30 should be good as well. It's still enough to give us the feeling of this being a glass, but it's not too intransparent. So it doesn't obstruct our view too much. And now if we test our game, we have achieved something that is actually quite good because now we can only finish the game and click on the player once it is here at the bottom. Because if we click on him now, you can see this you win screen never appears. So let me actually make a drop. You see that our glass frame is not rotating with us. So that's something we'll have to change. And let's quickly do that. Now a quick pause. What do you think how we can fix this bug? Okay, I hope you came up with an idea and basically we just need to add it to the parent because the parent is being moved with the super parent. So now you see that the glass is being rotated together. So now let's rotate it towards the other side. And here really we might want to change the speed up a little bit because it's really too slow for the left hand side. But it really starts to get some momentum after a couple of seconds. So now let's change it back. And once it's here at the bottom, we can click on it and we will have one. So let me click on it, you see you won. Of course, we don't have a proper win condition and resetting here. So resetting the screen once we won, but that's something we'll take care of later. So for now, we're good to go with the next lecture. See you there. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you're one step closer to becoming a Unity game developer. And if you haven't liked the video yet, please do so now as well as subscribe. And also make sure to follow along in the playlist to become a real Unity developer. And if you want to fast track the whole development process of becoming a developer, then definitely check out our Unity Masterclass in which you're going to build a bunch of games and while doing so, learn everything you need to know about game development and, well, have your first couple of projects under your belt. So check it out. The link is in the description below. You will get a huge discount and I hope to see you in the next video.